Good day! We are Group 1 and today we are going to discuss a biogeochemical cycle that most of us are familiar with, the water cycle. In this presentation, we will explain two versions of the cycle. One is the undisturbed natural process, while the other is the altered model that includes the presence of human interventions and the effects of climate change. Let's begin with the general model of the water cycle. This diagram depicts common occurrences that happen on large reservoirs of water and even in the plants where water can be stored. One way water turns into gas is through evaporation. With the heat coming from the sun, liquid water evaporates and changes into water vapor. Another way is through transpiration, which is simply the evaporation of water from plants. When water is in its solid form, like in the ice caps and glaciers, it evaporates through a process called sublimation. Now, as the water vapor rises up in the atmosphere, it gets cooler and turns into water droplets, and through condensation, clouds will begin to form. Through transportation, water moves through the atmosphere, and when the water droplets become too heavy to stay suspended in the clouds, water starts to fall back on Earth as rain, snow, drizzle, or hail. After precipitation, water will run off from mountains and the land surface, and it may either run off back into different bodies of water, or it may infiltrate the ground and percolate deeper into groundwater. Groundwater may also return to other water systems, or it may be absorbed through plant uptake. And over time, as water goes back to these basins, the cycle continues. Unfortunately, this process with Earth's hydrosphere is not perfect. When we introduce human activity into this model, the dynamics of the water cycle change immensely because of pollution, deforestation and vegetation clearing, conversion of land, industrialization, and over-acquisition of water. Such activities also exacerbate the effects of climate change. Due to global warming, evaporation levels increase, resulting in drier weather conditions and stronger precipitation afterwards. Deforestation, on the other hand, decreases transpiration and leaves the soil vulnerable to erosion and degradation. In addition to this, because of industrialization, ground that is usually porous is covered with impervious materials that causes water to directly run off without being absorbed. This causes an increase in surface runoff and a decrease in infiltration, percolation, and groundwater flow. All these come together to create an imbalance in the cycle that causes longer dry seasons, heavier rainfall, water scarcity, droughts, and floods. However, these effects are only the tip of the iceberg, as these activities also have damaging effects on biodiversity, food security, human health, and water quality. Only about 16% of water vapor comes from land. Small as it seems, this water vapor plays a crucial role in biomes such as tropical rainforest. Dense tropical rainforests have such numerous plants that most of the local rainfall comes from the water vapor transpired by plants. Now, due to deforestation, transpiration rates will significantly decrease resulting in reduced precipitation. Water is a principal requirement for plant growth. If deforestation persists, local rainfall may not be enough to allow the rainforest to regrow. This decrease in the water supply is disadvantageous, especially to trees that need a lot of time and resources to grow. With fewer trees, plant and animal species that rely on them will have no choice but to migrate, or worse, become extinct. As a result, the tropical rainforest could change into a less diverse tropical grassland. Food security is dependent on water because it is a necessary intake for all living things in order to survive. A producer, the foundation of all food chains, relies heavily on water for development and survival. Therefore, they directly or indirectly play a critical role in ensuring the survival of consumers in each food chain. Food security for higher consumers will now be unstable because there won't be enough food for all herbivores or omnivores if there are fewer plants to eat, so their survival is in jeopardy. As a result, it will now have an impact on the amount of food available to the predators or and carnivores, consequently indirectly affecting them as well. Vegetation clearing affects the ecosystem by causing lack of plants as food source and lack of water source for organisms through the increased soil erosion that can lead to the blockage of water waste through sediments. The Earth houses numerous water reservoirs, but due to industrialization, such sources get polluted wherein humans become in danger of suffering from health issues like cancer and cardiovascular conditions. Industrial units discharge water locally without treatment, causing the transportation of pesticides, chemicals, waste oil, and heavy metals. Polluted sewage water can also cause certain diseases like typhoid, dysentery, and cholera. Other than that, climate change can cause changes in precipitation and result in extreme weather events and rising sea levels, consequently affecting our health. Acid rain is one example of this side effect which can be triggered by the release of sulfur dioxide and much of the nitrogen oxides from burning fossil fuels. 
Access to safe and clean water is a human right. However, climate change endangers water security as well. Inland freshwater systems and marine waters are utilized for household, industrial, and agricultural use. Sometimes, these acquisitions of water supply come in at rates faster than nature can replace. Because climate change causes algal blooms, salinization, acidification, and eutrophication, stable water supply is hindered. Also, not all countries can afford expensive extra measures for filtering water. Only 3% of the Earth's water is fresh, where 0.4% of that is drinkable and accessible, as most of the water is hidden underground or in ice glaciers. Water scarcity is associated with the over-acquisition of water and the problems regarding water rights. As students, we can alleviate these problems in many ways, and that includes water conservation. Remember that water remains constant, but usable and potable drinking water isn't. If we start conserving water in our own ways, we can ensure availability of a clean and healthy water supply little by little. We can achieve that through efficient usage of water and proper management of it, such as turning off unused faucets and consuming water appropriately to what is only needed. Proper disposal of our garbage and other pollutants would also minimize these effects in a small yet impactful way. Think green. Let us promote awareness and join campaigns in fighting the effects of climate change to other people and encourage them to be environmental. Being a wise consumer to all of the resources available to us would benefit not only humanity but also the living systems around us. Concerning all these problems, the change must start among us. No organism can survive entirely without water. Based on the discussion, the presence of climate change is a threat to clean and safe water. Biodiversity is made vulnerable by global warming through deforestation, vegetation clearing for food security, industrialization for human health, and lastly, the over-acquisition of water despite deteriorating quality. Some countries propose solutions to manage their water, but in the long run, with continued emission of greenhouse gases, the situation will worsen. We must be aware that while the majority of our planet is water, safe and clean water is not easily accessible.